Bones Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the Kingsmen and Billy Mills Orchestra. Well, tonight we welcome back Fibber and Molly to cheer us and warm our hearts. And I'm back, too, to remind you to keep the rooms of your house as attractive as possible. To have chairs and tables and sideboards that glisten and shine. Yes, and to have nice-looking, highly polished floors. They're especially important to the beauty of a room. And it's a beauty every floor in your house will have and keep when you use Johnson's Paste Wax. Because Johnson's Paste Wax not only makes your floors glisten from border to border, it also covers those floors with a hard coat that protects your floors. Resist scratching and wear. Nice part is, dirt can't penetrate that tough coat of Johnson's Wax. So, a few strokes with a dry mop is all it takes to keep your floors sparkling. Tomorrow, get some Johnson's Paste Wax. Make cleaning easy. Protect your wood floors, too. And as you look at their rich, lustrous surface in the evening lamplight, see if you don't agree that nice-looking rooms and warm, happy hearts go together. There is a term for a man who won't go to work until autumn. And here he is, the fall guy and his wife, Fibber McGee and Molly. What's the matter with you these days? You seem a little discontented. Oh, I am. I'm peeved. I'm unconcerted. I'm let down. I feel like a pig with laryngitis. How's that? Disgruntled. <laughs> as downcast as a yo-yo, as Bob Hope would say. Yeah. Who? Bob Hope. Oh, yeah, the fellow with the snap brim face. <laughs> well, here's my complaint, Tootsie. I'm bored. Nothing happens. No excitement. I sit around here on my big fat... Easy chair and smoke from <laughs> What kind of a life is that for a red-blooded American boy like me? Isn't that rather a Russian attitude, dearie? Huh? Trying to think up ways to disturb the peace, are you? Oh, well, maybe it is, but let's be fair. You've got to admit Russia always observes the fire laws at the U.N. conferences. Yes? Yeah. They lower the Iron Curtain at least once during every performance. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, if something exciting don't start happening around here soon, I'm... Somebody at the door, dear. And if it'll help your mood any, I hope it's somebody with a black mask carrying a smoking revolver and a cage full of vampire bats. Yeah, no such luck. Probably just one of our dull friends. Come in. Oh, it's the old-timer, McGee. Ah, uh, what'd I tell you? Hi, old-timer. Hello, Mr. Old-timer. Hi there, kids. Hey, I got some exciting news for you. <laughs> Yeah. What is it? Know that flagpole sitter up on top of the pole in the Whistle Vista Trust building? Yeah. What about him? Well, he was getting so little attention it made him sore. Mm. So he said the town was dead, and now he's sitting there at half mast in memory of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm afraid himself here agrees with the flagpole sitter, Mr. Oldtimer. Boy, I sure do. This town is so dull, I hear the police department is getting an unlisted phone number. <laughs> exactly how you feel, Johnny. Never forget once I was kind of bored, busted, and desperate. That was way back in my salad days. In your what? In my salad days, Johnny. I was green and all mixed up. <laughs> the only reason somebody didn't take a knife to me was it wouldn't have been, it would have been bad manners. It would have been. Yes, it would have been. <laughs> anyway, I just had a nickel betwixt me and starvation, so I called up my brother. Line was out of order. Called him again later. Lion was out of order. For two days I tried to call him. Lion was always out of order. Well, you still had your nickel. And when you were young, a nickel must have been worth about five cents. <laughs> so what'd you do, old timer? <laughs> well, sir, I was right near the zoo at the time, so I decided to destroy myself. Oh, Throw myself to the wild animals. I was that disgusted. Wow. So I walks up to the keeper and I says, What time you feed the animals, monkey boy? And he says, well, I feed this big one in about 15 minutes, but he don't get no meat tonight. Why not, says I. Well, says he, the lion is out of order. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> well, I hope you're not 
as desperate as all that, dearie. No, but my gosh, I got to do something. Hey, you know what I think I'll do? What? I'm going to go downtown and get my pants pressed. <laughs> well, that ought to cause a lot of excitement, at least among your sartorial critics. I'll get my hat and go with you, if you don't mind. Oh, I'd love to have you, kiddo. Let's go. All right. I'll run upstairs and put on my face. Okay. Take your time, though. The pressing shop is open till six. Ah, there goes a good kid. I hope she don't take it too personal that I don't find life too exciting, but they say exciting marriages don't last long. They pass the exclamation point too quick. <laughs> I always said that if... Oh, now. Come in. Well, my gosh, hi, Teeny. I'm glad to see you. How you been, Teeny? You going to school these days? Oh, sure. Sure. I'm in the third grade, too, I bet you. Well, good for you. I was in the third grade once myself. Three times, in fact. <laughs> hey, Mrs. McGee and I are going downtown early tomorrow. Stop by and we'll give you a lift to school. Oh, gee, thanks, mister, but Mr. Toops is going to take me tomorrow. More Toops? He don't go that way. Oh, he does tomorrow, I bet you. Teacher wants to see him on account of Willie's arithmetic. Oh, well, I can understand that. Old Mort ain't any genius at mathematics, too, either. <laughs> when he was treasurer of the Elks Club, we got so far into the red, we were listed as subversive. <laughs> so Willie Toops has got a written tick trouble, too, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Teacher asked him what two and two was, and Willie said, little Joe. <laughs> She asked him what four and four were, and he said eight, right. the hard way. Oh. <laughs> and she said, what six and six? And Willie said, boxcar. <laughs> and she said, what's one and two? And Willie says, you lose the point, but you keep the dice, so the teacher wants to talk to Mr. Toot. <laughs> well, I guess I better fade now, mister. <laughs> so long. So Billy Mills in the orchestra and a fellow with an umbrella. gets the dull, the guy's got to get his pants pressed just for some excitement. Oh, well, I guess we can use the rain. What rain? The rain that always rains when I get my pants pressed. <laughs> or the car washed. That's why. Hey, look who's coming. Oh, for goodness sakes, it's Wallace Wimple. Hello, Mr. Wimple. Hi, Wimp, old man. Hello, folks. <laughs> Hello. Going to the public library, Mr. Wimple? I see you have a book under your arm. Oh, this is just my bird book, Mrs. McGee. Your what, Wim? My bird book. Oh. I'm president of the Wistful Vista Bird Watchers and Bee Banders, you know. What on earth are bee banders? Well, 
We catch a bee and put a little teensy-weensy band around one of his legs and then let him go. Uh-huh. That way we can study how far they travel, how many trips they make, and all that sort of oh, thing. Oh, interesting. I banded a dandy big bumblebee yesterday. <laughs> and you know where he went? Where'd he go, Wimp? Down the back of my collar. <laughs> but today I'm out bird watching. We had a report that there are some Alabama finches, some northern snipe, and some green tufted ruffs just east of town. They pretty hard to find, are they, Mr. Wimple? Well, the finch is a cinch, and the snipe is a pipe, but the rough is really tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to be getting along, folks. I'm on my way to meet Sweetie Thing. You mean? Yes, my big old wife. <laughs> I'm meeting her under the big clock on the department store corner at 2.15. 2.15? Heavenly days, it's 2.45 now. I know. But there's a rumor going around that that big clock is going to fall down one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> so I always let you know who get there first. Yeah. Well, go on. Go on. Well, come on in the pressing shop, Molly. Let's get my pants pressed and then look around for a little excitement. Hello, Mr. Threadbomb. Hi, Threadbomb. Hello, Mr. McGee. Hello, McGee. When are you going to let me make your suit? Red bomb, you can start making me a suit on the day that Dewey votes for Truman. <laughs> and as long as you'll have a long time to wait for that, I'm going to let you put a crease in these pants. You think you can get any shape into those pants just during one administration? I can try, Mrs. McGee. Hey, take them off in the booth, McGee, behind those curtains. Oh, have yeah. a chair, Mrs. McGee. No, thank you. I'll just stand here by the window. Yeah. Well, here's the pants, Red bomb. Press them so you can't see the apples in the knees. Hey! Hey, what's that music, Molly? Oh, McGee, it's a parade. Look, Mr. Threadbomb. A parade? Oh, I love parades. Watch the shot, McGee. I want to see the parade. Oh, I knew if I came downtown, I'd find some excitement. Boy, hand me my pants, Molly. Let's go see the parade. Well, I can't, dearie. Mr. Threadbomb took them with him when he left. He had them over his arm. What? He had them over his arm? Well, of all the dirty. Well, if that wasn't a silly thing to do. Now, I can't see the parade. Who's in it? Well... There goes the governor's car. Yeah? Yes. The ROTC. Oh, there's a painful sight. What's that? The Dental Society drill team. Ooh. <laughs> yes, and there's the Fourth Ward Checker Chowder and Marching Club. And the Veterans of Foreign War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a bunch of older men with cauliflower ears carrying a banner. Cauliflower ears? What's the banner say? Veterans of the Boxer Rebellion. Oh. <laughs> dad rat, the dad rat. Where's that guy with my pants? Just when there's some excitement around here, I get caught with my... I wonder where he went with them. Well, <laughs> he's probably watching the parade because... Hello, Molly. Hiya, pal. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Junior. What's new? What do you mean, what's new? Haven't you heard? Heard what, Mr. Wilcox? There's a new glow in glow coat. A glow that's longer lasting. A glow that protects the beauty of your linoleum better than ever before. Why, with a new glow coat... Oh, Junior. Whoa, just a minute. Just a minute, boy. What's the matter? Look, anxious lad. You've had all summer to think up a subtle, delicate approach to the subject, and what do you do? You come blooping in here and start beating us over the head with salesmanship. Can't you be a little more subtle, Mr. Wilcox? Can't you try a little more delicate approach? Well, I could, but I don't see why I should, Molly. Suppose your millionaire uncle died and left you everything. Would you want to be told quick or have it slip up on you? No, sir. Good news should be passed on right away and loud. So that's why I say you'll like this new self-polishing floor wax better. There's a new glow in glow coat that gives a shine that a damp cloth doesn't disturb... That shines as it dries in 20 minutes or less. And has a sparkling finish that... What's the matter? What are you staring at me for? Seeing you standing there like that just reminded me of something, pal. What? I left my wife sitting in the Bijou Theater. What is there about me that reminded you of that? Those Technicolor shorts you're wearing. <laughs> He should talk about my shorts. Did you ever see the shorts he wears with the red ants printed all? No, naturally you haven't. <laughs> hey, is the parade over? No, there's still one elephant coming along. No, no, it isn't either. It's Dr. Gamble. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Molly. Hello, Doctor. Hello, McGee. Hi, Doc. 
Uh, how'd you know I was in here? I saw your blue serge pants down near Oak Street over Threadbaum's arm. <laughs> how did you know they were McGee's, Doctor? Some woman was using them as a mirror to powder her nose. <laughs> Nobody but Super Mug here wears pants with such a lovely gloss. Probably the glow coat influence. <laughs> Look, cylinder head. <laughs> I ain't in any mood to be twitted. I come in here to get my trousers pressed, and the minute I get them off, down the street comes a big parade, and I can't even go to the window. Well, I'm glad somebody's found a way to keep you off the streets. <laughs> Say, I haven't seen you people much this summer. No. It was a very pleasant summer. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, do me a favor, will you, witch doctor? Run down the street and find Fred Baum and drag him back here so I can put my pants on again and get out of this stuffy cubby hole. Why, certainly. I've got to get back to my office anyway. It's getting late. My goodness, that's a beautiful wristwatch you have there, doctor. Well, thank you. I just bought it. The genuine 17 jewel Grunova. A genuine Grunova? And you bought it? Well, why not? My gosh, I never knew they sold them things. I thought they just gave them away on a radio program. <laughs> Nice to see you, Doctor. You've got to hurry on? Yes, I have an appointment in ten minutes. Peculiar case. Actress. Can't stop jerking and wiggling. And her skin is beginning to get a sort of herringbone pattern on it. Wow, that sounds serious. What's the treatment, Doc? Well, I'm going to order her to get off television and back into radio. Good day. <laughs> Here are the King's Men. There once was a man, a ranger, a music-happy guy. And when he'd orchestrate a song for weird effects, he'd try. And he felt especially moody. He'd sit down and write a tune for a piccolo and harp. Six typewriters, one zither, and a leaky balloon. He turned out his mad arrangements, got famous overnight. There seemed to be no limit to his wild orchestral flight. He arranged the anvil chorus as a solo for bassoon with a piccolo and harp, six typewriters, a zipper, and a leaky balloon. Idle bird brain. So the guy went home and he wrote a little fugue. Yes, he wrote a little fugue, a little fugue, a little fugue, a little fugue for lawnmowers, divisi, and a pickle and a window pane. But one day St. Peter called him. He scored his final. Up the golden stair to join the angel throng. At the pearly gates they met him, and the choir gave forth a tune. With the piccolo and harp, six typewriters, a zither and a leaky balloon, a piccolo and harp. Ah, this is a fine state of how do you do. Me trapped in here with no britches and the whole town full of excitement. I'll give Threadbound just two minutes to get back here with my pants. Then what will you do? Well, I'll... Uh, I don't know. I might even sue him. What could I sue him for? Promise of breaches? <laughs> <laughs> don't you get it, Molly? Promise of breaches? Breaches promise? It ain't funny, McGee. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's the best I could do in my course. Day. Oh my gosh, what was that? A streetcar crashed into an egg truck and knocked it through the window of Kramer's drugstore and sheared off a hydrant and water is squirting 50 feet in the air and the motorman and the truck driver are hitting each other and the policemen are trying to separate them and the gutter is full of broken eggs. Why did you ask? <laughs> Why did I ask, she says. 
This town has had more excitement in the last hour than it's seen for 40 years. And me trapped in here with no pants. <laughs> Oh, all the dumb luck. Why couldn't Oh, you... my goodness, it's Mayor Latrivia. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Hi, Latriv, old man. Hello, Molly. Hello, McGee. Say, why are you sticking your unhappy-looking face out through those curtains? You hiding from somebody? He's hiding from everybody till he gets his trousers back. Oh, oh, getting a fitting, are you, McGee? Hmm. Well, that should dispel some of the caustic criticism so accurately aimed at your sartorial ineptitude. <laughs> Mighty fancy language, Latrive. <laughs> you an Oxford man? Yes, I am, McGee. Uh -huh. I've tried wearing high shoes, but they hurt my ankle. <laughs> we came down to get McGee's trousers pressed, but Mr. Threadbomb ran off with them over his arm when the parade started. Yeah, and I've been sitting here ever since. Hot under the collar and cold under the shorts. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Mayor, I'm surprised you weren't in the parade. Well, it was for an opponent of mine, Mrs. McGee, a man I heartily dislike personally and politically. Is he going to give you any competition for election, Madrid? <laughs> no, no, I think not. I've done a little research into his private life, and believe me, I cooked his goose for him. Well, I think that was a mighty generous gesture, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> mighty neighborly. I beg your That's pardon. That's why we like you, Madrid. Any type guy that no matter how bitter his campaign is, he can stop in the middle of it long enough to go over to the other guy's house and cook him a goose. That's the type guy. <laughs> Mine too, dearie. Yes, sir. I, I don't think you quite you got understand. got a special recipe for roast goose, La Trip? <laughs> reason I ask, we got one that's been in the family for four generations. A goose? Oh, no, no. <laughs> a recipe. You see, La Trip, you take a hen goose and you marionette it into dandelion wine for six days and uh, then please, you drop it. Please, please. Okay, just a minute. I didn't mean I actually went to the man's house and cooked a goose for it. I was merely Oh, using you a... had the man over to your house. Oh, 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 oh. oh, that was even sweller of you. Yes, sir, that's the true American spirit. That's democracy at work. I claim that any type guy... No, 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 no McGee. No, let's get this straight. Huh? I did not actually roast a goose for anybody. Oh, I simply Maybe used... Maybe he fried a... it, McGee. <laughs> Personally, I never heard of fried goose, but I'm open-minded about it. <laughs> Me too. What's your recipe for fried goose, Madrid? I've never fried a goose, McGee. <laughs> nor roasted one either. Oh. Can't you get it through your head that I'm... Look, mm -hmm. this was not really a culinary operation. Oh. I was not referring to the actual cooking of an ordinary goose. I merely Oh, meant... maybe it was a I... wild goosey cook. <laughs> Personally, I find them a little gamey, my Not friend. if you use my family recipe, you don't. You take a wild hen goose, marionette of six days, and dandelion wine. I don't want a marionette of hen! <laughs> cook a dandelion! A liar! No! Nobody said anything about winding a hen and giving him anything! In the goosey! When I said I manned the cook's goose! <laughs> character, I consider myself somewhat of a critic. And when I tell you... Of a what, Mr. Mayor? Critic, Molly. Critic. One of them insects that rubs its hind legs together. And... <laughs> Can you do that, Latrivia? <laughs> My gosh, I don't know how you ever lose an election with a talent like that. Any guy that can rub his hind legs together and screech at <laughs> Did he leave, Molly? <laughs> Must have just remembered an appointment. Hey, look out the door and see if Thread Bomb is coming. Now that I missed all the excitement, I might as well get my pants and go home. Well, I can see him from here, dearie. He's running down the street. This way? No, the other way. The other way? What for? What's he running? Heavenly Dean. There's a fire someplace. Fire? Well, of all the dirty tricks. That map that dad ran it. Fire. Fire out there. 
terribly sorry. I forgot all about you sitting here without any trousers. But there was so much excitement, I never thought of you. I- I'll press them right away. Hand them here, Threadbomb. You mean you... Hand them here before I mangle you. <laughs> you kept me trapped in here while there was parades, fires, accidents, and street brawls. And hereafter, I take my business elsewhere. I and you are washed up, Threadbomb. <laughs> you mean somebody else is going to get that 40 cents every three months? <laughs> Pretty inconsiderate, Mr. Threadbomb. I know. I'm I'm very sorry. Okay, Threadbear. Forget it. <laughs> Come, Mrs. McGee. Oh, heavenly days. Will you look at that? They cleaned up the mess in front of Kramer's drugstore, and you'd never know a thing happened. Mm, there ain't even any confetti to show there's been a parade. Boy, if I don't miss out on everything. It's a miracle the way nothing ever happens around me. Well, let's go home, dearie, and read about it in the paper. Yeah, okay, kiddo. Get in. I'll drive. a minute there, mister. Is this your car? Yes, it is, officer. Something wrong? Lady, you got a gift for understatement. What are you talking about? I ain't even been driving this car for an hour and a half. I've been sitting in the tailor shop there getting my pants pressed. Yeah. And while you were in there, we had a fire on this car right in front of a fire hydrant. Hmm? Also in a no-parking block. Also on a published and posted parade route. Also, it's leaking oil, and an egg truck skidded on it and crashed into a streetcar, and a police officer on a motorcycle rushing to the scene also skidded and broke a leg. Hmm. Mister, you're guilty of enough infractions to get 99 years. I am, huh? Oh, boy, ain't that wonderful, Molly? I finally stirred up some, some excitement in this town. <laughs> well, give me the summons, Buster, and thank you very much. You saved my day. No, sir, you just get along home. What's huh? this? You're not going to arrest him for all those things? Lady, with a list of misdemeanors that long, no judge would believe it. Huh? And, and I'd be a nasty old Cossack persecuting an innocent citizen. Oh, no, I'm no fool. Go on, Sonny, beat it. Well, of all... And, uh, Sonny... Yeah? Just as a suggestion. Yeah? Better put your pants on. Hibber and Molly will be back in just a minute. Most of you know that the mellow beauty of gleaming polished floors is only one of the rewards you get with Johnson's Paste Wax. Johnson's Wax, you see, protects your floor from scratching and the rough wear the men folks give it. And that same coat of hard, glistening Johnson's Wax makes your floor easy to keep clean. A dry cloth picks up dirt in a flash, leaving your floor as bright as when you first waxed it. That's pretty important. I think you'll agree with the wet weather coming on. When you're at the store tomorrow, ask for Johnson's Paste Wax. And next week when you're listening to this program, I hope the surface of your floors will be twinkling as brightly as, well, Fibber and Molly. Don't forget about the new Johnson Beauty Floor Electric Polisher. You just glide it around while it does the buffing and polishing for you. You can buy a Beauty Floor electric floor polisher from your Johnson dealer or rent one by the day at a low cost if you prefer. McGee, don't let me forget to hear Johnson's Wax other show tomorrow morning. Okay, just let me know. Who's other show? Johnson's Wax. Hmm? They have another radio show on Mondays and Wednesday morning. With Fred Waring, no less. Johnson's have got another show on? My gosh, kiddo, why don't somebody tell me these things? Let me out that bookcase. What on earth are you looking for? My joke book. I've been too relaxed. Well, it could be. Yeah. Good night. Good night, all. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is WMAQ, NBC in Chicago. 